All right, so we are gonna get this party started. We are going to jump right in. My name is Suzanne Hodge. I'm here with the beautiful Suzanne Hart, and I'm here. With the beautiful <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> We're spending too much time together. And our topic today is what do you stand for? Now, this is not a simple question. It may be a short question, but it is a big question. And uh, and we're gonna dig into it. So I think the first place we, we wanna start is how do you identify when you're experiencing mm. that internal conflict? Yeah. And it's such a great question because I don't think we always know until, or for some mm. of us, until it's too late. Yeah. Right? So how do you know what are the telltale signs and are there telltale signs before it's too late? Yeah. Yeah, and, and it's and it's really interesting because it, in doing this, it really made me sit and take a look. And so to answer that question, I really do believe that there are always ten telltale signs. The question is, do we know what they are? And then mm-hmm. even if we know what they are, are we ignoring them? And so that's that's yeah. one of the things that came up for me. Like, oh my gosh, how, how many times do I ignore the signs? So one of the, the things for me to take a look at when I'm internal having internal conflict is that nagging feeling for me. And so how much, uh, how many of our super achievers out there could identify with that? Like you just have that mm-hmm. nagging feeling but before it becomes like a big nagging feeling it's usually like a tiny little feeling that thing that just keeps popping up and won't quite go away so that's the first that's my first sign how okay. about you what's, what's think, the sign for you i think for me it, it well there's there's a few one is is my gut's never wrong mm-hmm. and i have learned that when i ignore my gut it's always not good. So my gut will often, in a in a split second, tell me what what I need to do, and and the question is, do I have the courage to listen? Because sometimes it seems off the wall. Do you know what I mean? Like what? And so that's that's the first one for me. The yeah. second one for me is when I start asking people what to do. Mm. Because I don't know about anyone else, but I'm pretty certain. I make I'm I'm like this when it comes to making most okay. decisions. I know I'm in or I'm out. It's a yes or it's a no. I'm pretty certain. Okay. And 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 if I have questions, they're questions that g- give me a deeper understanding of my yes. Mm. Usually, or not my no, but my yes. Yeah. So they're more how-to questions, but. When I start asking, should I? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah. We should do this. Do you think this is a good idea? What do you think about it? That is a sign mm-hmm. that I am experiencing something that I haven't put my finger on. However, this is the, the thing. In mindset, we have these principles called, called your GPS, your guiding principles for success. Mm-hmm. And um, and until I actually sat down and wrote those, I would miss my internal conflict. Mm-hmm. I would miss that it was something going on with me. So have you ever, and be honest, put a yes, put a something in the comment <laughs> section, lashed out at somebody, and then when you went and sat in a quiet moment, you were like, okay, that had nothing to do with them. They were just <laughs> target of my stuff. <laughs> more, um, more, than, more than I care to admit. So, right? and, and and that's because we have something going on, and and rather than process it, we think it's it, we think it's out there. Yeah. It's that person. So for me, what was really helpful was really getting clear on the values that and beliefs that guide my life. Right. And I came up with eight of them, and um, and and so one one is open, honest communication. I'm just gonna put it out there, and the other one is integrity. Those are my two top top ones. 
open, honest, timely mm. communication. And usually when I'm having an, an internal conflict, integrity is the first flag. And, and the other one is just treatment, treating people the way right. I want to be treated. When I start looking at those things and or I see something that doesn't align with those things, it's a flag because I go into absolute total internal conflict. So one of the things for me for this to really get clear was I had to really understand when you say, what do you stand for? Mm -hmm. It's not wait till something happens to say, I'm not going to stand for that is to have foundational principles and values that you know you stand for. Yeah. So that was the key one for me. Otherwise I was being led down the garden path right. and realizing I was going in the wrong direction mm -hmm. when it was too late, or I was lashing out at people who were asking me to do things as if it was their problem. And, and people can, people can put in ask, people can put in requests, people have the right to behave however they, they want to. Right. It was me needing to know what did I stand for? So I knew how to respond. Mm, mm. And, and, it, and it's really, and it's really good. Uh, and I like that you put that, you know, in there because that's, those are some of the things that I'm learning to pay attention to as I journey through, like, how are, how am I reacting? And most of the times it's not really a response is a reaction to certain situations and then processing those situations. So what's really going on on the inside? And I, I, and I love that you said it. A lot of times we want to project that it's mm -hmm. outside of us. But if we just take the minute to stop and reflect, you know, then we'll see that usually most of the times is something going on. So that's why if you haven't caught it yet, everyone, you should have a Mindset Mastery Mentor. My Mindset Mastery Mentor is Suzanne Hart. She keeps me on track. I say it all the time. <laughs> so, but one of the things, too, that came up for me, Suzanne, as I unpack this question for myself, is paying attention to my energy, the energy that I bring to a situation. So... I realize when I'm in conflict, uh, when, when, uh, let me just start here. When I'm 100%, you know, moving into something and I'm clear about it, the energy signature is high. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And when I'm not, the energy signature is different. Absolutely. So I bring a whole total different um, energy to the situation. Um, it, it sometimes looks like no energy mm -hmm. to the situation. And that's because, and I'm learning to say, well, oh, okay, what's really going on here? Why do I feel, you know, not excited about this? Or why, mm -hmm. why is my energy towards this thing or my attitude toward this thing the way that it is and then once i unpack it it's normally something that i haven't resolved yet or something that i'm in conflict with i want to go back and just share with everyone the part about identifying your values because i think for me in working with you that has been like one of the most important pieces of work that I've done. And so we all have, you know, values. We have things that we hold dear to us. And most of the times it's in our minds. Mm -hmm. And what I found was for me, not communicating those values. Absolutely. To others. Absolutely. So what yeah. So what I've learned to do is write those things down. So they're in front of me all the time, okay? Mm -hmm. And then communicate them. Because if we're not in communication around our values, then the first thing is we can keep ourselves out of situations or we don't know how to operate in, search, in situations once we aren't clear. And then once we communicate them, then, you know, people have an expectation of, what we like, what we value. And so they move according. So it's like really awesome to know that that's one of the ways yeah. that you help, <laughs> that you help our super achievers. Thank you. You know, let's dive into that a little bit more because, you know, if you ask most people, they will tell you they know what they value. 
Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'll give you an example. I was working with a, an executive director a few years ago. And, um, and I asked them, her, does she have principles and values that guide her? Because they often are the same ones that guide your business. And she said, absolutely. So she pulled them out and we started going through them. And one of the questions I asked her was, how does this show up in your world? Mm. So one of them was, was integrity. And I said, how does this show up in your office and in your world? What does this look like? And she sat and she was like, wow, Mm -hmm. that's a great question. And why that's so key is is oftentimes we'll feel internal conflict Mm -hmm. in our body, but we can't articulate it because we didn't spend the time when we wrote these values out to actually look at them Mm -hmm. from the perspective of behaviors, actions, um, those things. So now we're experiencing some things off, but we don't have the language for it because we haven't spent the time. So one of the things, you know, the next question we said we were going to answer is how does one, how do you, what do you do once you've experienced an internal conflict? And this is one of the things it's really to sit and ask yourself, what's the value that's off and why? Like what's the behavior, what's the, right. the, the piece? And this is so important because as I said, people are allowed to do whatever they do, right? So someone yeah. can make, come in, someone can choose a decision for themselves that has nothing to do with you. Someone can ask you to do something that's totally off the wall to you. Un, our, our, our tendency is when someone asks us something and it's not in alignment, we lash out at them. Mm-hmm. Or we say like, how could you ask me this? Yeah. Or, blah, 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 blah. or why, why this? And, or how could you do this? And, and that's a very controlling response. Yeah. And, and it's also a very, let's escalate conflict response. Yeah. Right. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm now judging you and I'm judging your right to choose what you want to do, how you want to show up, all this sort of stuff. And really what it's, it's activating in you and I is an internal stirring. Like, mm. you can't do that. That's not right. And so when you are aware of this internal stirring that happens within you, and we say what to do with it, how do you identify it and what do you do, is you own it. Yeah. Okay. Right? And, and so it's like, you know, that's really cool, but there, it's, it's, that doesn't align with, with me. Something's off. And so even that day when I walked into the office um, and I spoke to my boss, it was because I couldn't witness. It had nothing. I mean, truly, so some people say it had nothing to do with you. She wasn't talking to you. I would be so out of alignment myself if I witnessed someone being inappropriately treated and pretended like I didn't see right. it, passed it, and I would lose such credibility for, with myself and with everyone else. And so for me, it was, yes, she has the right to do that if that's the way she wants to walk through the world. She can't do it in my space. Yeah. And I have to establish those boundaries Mm -hmm. and I have to make articulate those boundaries and also articulate that I'm creating a safe space for the people I work with. And they need to know that they will not be verbally assaulted when they mess up, make a mistake, fall short. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's how I'm going to get the best out of them. And so there's the, the stuff. I've got to take responsibility for my stand, my belief. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 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 and, and that's so true because I'm um, I'm just sitting here just trying to just imagine the impact that it would have had on your your team if you had said nothing. If you just let it if you just let it ride. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like you said, the word here is credibility. I don't think that you would have been able to re- maintain credibility in that space. Well, yeah, and I and I want I want everybody to 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 really look at this because when we think of impact, yes. So, what's the impact on my team? Well, one is they're not they're they're going to feel less safe. 
Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna be, uh, she doesn't have our back. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. However, the bigger piece is what's the impact on you and I yeah. when we don't honor our values? Yeah. And what is the impact on you and I when we don't um, speak up for what we believe in? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, have you ever watched someone arrive, start out on a journey to get something or somewhere and you arrive, they arrive and they are no longer who you thought them to be. Yeah. And you no longer like who they are. And you yeah. can tell that they no longer like who they are. Yeah. yeah. Because the journey costs them so much of, I like to call their soul. Yeah. Because they've been, they've been compromising and it's like chunks of them have been eat, like just pulled out. And, and so when we talk about what do you stand for? It is really, it's about keeping yourself whole and complete mm -hmm. as you go on these journeys and as we pursue the things we desire. And so that's really what we're talking about because the cost otherwise is too high. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's so good because um, I'm sitting here and this is one of the things that I'm working on, like I said, and this is why it's so good, like when we have stories and we unpack, you know, stories, there's always an event or something that happens that shifts things in you that causes you to, you know, walk through the world, you know, going forward in a way. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that, you know, I realize is that's my tendency, right? My tendency is to sometimes keep quiet. Mm -hmm. And and hope that it goes away. Yeah. And what I'm learning is, like you said earlier, it's not about sweeping it under the rug or ignoring and wishing that it goes away because it's it's there. You have a conflict. So it's from the moment I start to feel those little twinges, those little signs that come up is to first acknowledge to myself that something is amiss. Yeah. Okay. And what is it? And being able to go back to the things that I hold dear, the things that I value, it's such a great check, you know, to, yeah. to be able to clear that. And then after I, I find I'm finding once I clear it with myself first, then it's easier for me to go ahead and clear it with others. And so I have, oh, oh before I, you was about to say something. and then I, I, was gonna, I was gonna say, somebody type that in the comments section, clear it with yourself mm -hmm. before you clear it with others. And, and, and what's really interesting is sometimes when you go away, because if, if anyone knows me, so I have some people who spend some time with me I will, um, I will often create the pause in the conversation. Mm -hmm. so I'll say, I need a minute. Or one of my famous ones is, that's interesting. Um, and that's me, I need a minute. Mm -hmm. And I need a minute because um, my friends laugh at me because I have a lot of dialogue in my head. Uh -huh. and, and part of the lot of dialogue in my head is if I say what I'm thinking firsthand sometimes, uh, it's all it's all about the other person mm -hmm. and 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 because our my tendency and and I think many people's tendency is to blame to finger point mm -hmm. to, to do these things that are all about me looking good and defend position and pointing at you and that is not useful uh and when I take that moment and I reflect. I have to, it's, it's really the question of what's going on for me yeah. that's bringing up these emotions, these feelings. And there are times where it's all about me. Mm. And, and I would have created a conflict that wasn't present. Right. 
between me and the other person because this was all about me. This was about my fear. This was about me not feeling competent, competent, worthy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, and it was all about me. So, so part of it is when you go, when you take the time to do your work before you go and respond to the world or create something that doesn't, that doesn't need to be to happen. One is it grows you and it creates a, a just this really cool environment. And and so yeah, we've got to we've got to do that that work, and it it takes you know wisdom and maturity, yeah, wisdom and maturity. Because you know when I was young, um, people would say I was hot, <laughs> yeah, I was hot, <laughs> hot, and 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 I remember one of my supervisors said said to me, Suzanne, just because you see something, you don't need to say right. something. <laughs> not, not all the time. I was like, why not? That's hot. <laughs> and, and because it doesn't move things forward. I was like, oh, okay. And, and so I had to learn that wisdom. Mm -hmm. And and then it was the wisdom of self-reflection yeah. and the wisdom of responsibility. Yeah. And so really these are these are the pieces. Yeah. These are definitely the pieces. Okay. Good, good, good. Thank you for sharing that. So I was gonna ask you, how how do you? Or how should we create safe environments for others to share their thoughts? That is such a good question. And, and I think I think it starts with a safe environment for ourselves. Mm. And, and I'm always treat people the way you want to be treated, first of all, and then create a safe environment for yourself. So, so the big question for me is what would I need to be able to share, risk, innovate, try new things? feel safe messing up mm. and covering, feel safe saying I failed, I was wrong. What kind of environment do I need, right? And then for me, it's, if that's the environment I need, then that's the environment I am required to create and model. So one of the big things is, you know, when we talked about principles that guide you, Wherever I go, I put the principles on the table so people know what they are, right? And, and what that does is it, it starts to create the, the kind of the structure for the environment, what people can expect. And not only do I put the principles on the table, I will say if I'm the leader, I will say these are the principles that guide me. These are the principles I'm probably going to hold you all to. Right. However, these are the principles you can hold me to. And so I'll say one of them is open and honest communication. So I can, I will tell you that if there's something bothering me between you and I, you will hear it from me before you, you hear it from anyone else. Right. And if something's bothering you that I did, I'd like to hear it from you right. exactly. before, before uh, I hear it from someone else. Um, I like open, honest, timely communication and, and respectful. And mm -hmm. so we talk through that. Um, I like integrity. And so, and you know, and what does integrity look like? And, you know, it's doing what you say you're going to do and cleaning it up. But integrity is keeping the space whole and complete. So part of it is, is really modeling things. So, so I would go through these principles and guidance and then I would I would hold myself to them and I would model them yeah. and and you know I would talk about failure and say we are going to fail but this is the expectation right we're always going to fail that's how we grow that's how we right. learn that's how we expand what the question is what are we willing to be honest and have timely communication when things don't work out take responsibility from it learn and grow that's the expectation. So it's really talking through these principles right. and creating the environment and then walking the talk yeah. yourself, modeling it. Because it's one thing to speak it. It's another thing for people to watch you to live in it, right. and see you in it. Right. And, and, and then have it be the guiding thing of how you engage and treat others. And then the environment starts to happen. Yeah. Right. And and it's a process. You know, when I when I coach with um, executives, leaders, those sorts of things, when I 
this is one of the first things we do. We go, let's, let's, let's create the environment to which you are going to go into work every day. What does it look like? What does it feel like? How to experience it? I mean, we did that with your, when you were, when you had your team. Yeah. I, I was just about to say that was our call last week. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, it, and it's and you know it's funny it's it's an ongoing call because yeah. because you will find that things will come up mm -hmm. that will have you visit one of your values yeah. in a way that you didn't know, yeah. right? So find yourself out of integrity, and you're like, "Am I?" When point someone's pointing it out to you, oh, and you you're seeing it for the first time, finding yourself. You know, in is showing up in a way that you don't want to show up because you get caught up in the environment. It's an ongoing learning and growing. And and I was and I was just about to say one of the things that you said was so key because I I saw one of our super achievers put inside of the comment section is knowing your values and knowing your values is so key. But one of the things that I'm learning and putting into practice is identifying the behaviors that bring those values to life. And so I know one of the things that we always talk about is integrity. And I'm learning so much about the word integrity because usually, you know, it, it's like the short definition. Integrity is do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. And if you didn't do it, then go back and clean it up. And it's so great, you know, to say, but how does it live and how does it play out? Do we know, you know, what all of the actions of integrity look like? And so sometimes I know when we have our conversations, I'm like, oh, huh, okay. I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I got to go ahead and, and just add that to the list of behaviors, right, that would allow me um, to, to operate or keep operating in integrity. Mm -hmm. So it's really good that you say that and to know that it's continuous work. So after defining your values is identifying those behaviors that come along with them. And then are we, you know, consistently, you know, putting those behaviors, you know, into play and bringing them into our world? So, so good. And, and you know, and the, the other beautiful thing um, is that you'll get comfortable in an environment and the behaviors are at play and people are like, oh, this environment feels good. People are feeling safe. Mm -hmm. People are feeling things are going well. And then COVID, phew, environment right. upside down right. um a deadline environment goes like this like it's almost like someone throws fire on the environment and it's like yep it okay. changes, it changes. <laughs> and and so when we're why this is so important is that covid caused a lot of internal conflict for people that they didn't want to talk about mm -hmm. right fear of losing my job not having enough money fear of not mm -hmm. being my family, fear of getting sick, overwhelm, exhaustion. And people were walking with all of this and it was churning inside. It was a th one thing that lit up environments and, and had it be crazy. Um, you can look at a, a deadline or a major project in an organization and, right? You can look at, and we, we've had this, sales aren't where you want it to be. And 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 it, it can create some stuff. Mm -hmm. And so part of it is knowing that it's an ongoing doing the work of reflection yeah. and doing the work of staying in your values, right. no matter what the situation is. And that's where yeah, the, work the rubber hits the yeah. road because it is so easy to say, well, it was because of this situation that I reacted mm. like that. And, um, and, <laughs> and, and no, 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 no. A value is a value, is a value. It doesn't shift because the situation right. got tough. It doesn't shift because you got tired. That's when we got to go clean it up. Yeah. And so it's, it's that constant, 
checking ourselves right. against our values and asking ourselves, who am I right now? Yeah. Right? Who am I being right now? It's and it's 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 work. Knowing what you stand for and being what you say you stand for is continuous work. Mm. 